Hello again. So today we're going to tackle uh, an oldie but a goodie. It's your basic inline fuse. Um, you can buy the pre-made ones just about anywhere, although sometimes they're quite pricey or other times they're out and you need one now. So, so this is for that situation when you don't happen to have one like these or can't get to it, but you really need an inline fuse. So let's get to it. First you need a couple small pieces of hookup wire or if you have, you're doing it in line then you'll just put it in line with the wire you're using. A couple of connectors, a fuse of course, and some different sizes, gauges of heat shrink. So first thing you're going to want to do is trim off some of the wire insulator. Standard procedure for any wiring job. So you got two of those off. Give them a twist. Sometimes those strippers make a mess of the wire. Now I tin all my ends for doing this kind of thing and one is just because I believe it's the right thing to do and two for this application it actually strengthens the end where it goes into the connector so it's less likely to fray or um, break and those connectors are infamous for breaking right at the connection because they don't have any real sort of strain relief on it so as the wires move and out if they're in that kind of location they will eventually break um, the next thing i do that a lot of other people don't do is i put some heat shrink about half an inch onto the wire itself where it's going to meet to the connector and this actually helps create a bit of a strain relief so I mean it's not foolproof and it won't last as well as some of the other strain reliefs that you can get the um, more skookum heavy duty plastic ones and whatnot but it will do the job next is you're going to trim off all but maybe half an inch of the wire whatnot just enough so that it goes into each connector and into the connector and just basically comes out a little bit on the end. I don't know if you can see that there, but that's where it's going to come out. Then you're going to crimp this in place. When you're crimping, and not a lot of people know this, is that there is a split inside the connector in there and that should be opposite this post on your cutters or crimpers. So when you're putting it in, usually the split is on the, the top like that. So your post goes underneath that and puts it into position there and then when you crimp it you're not driving a wedge into that split that's actually going to make the, the wire fall out easier it actually crimps it down a lot better so that's something actually a lot of people don't know and it's kind of surprising actually because your crimps will last a lot longer if you do it that way so now you've got those two in place Next thing you're going to do is, I mean, you can stick it onto these here, is where it's going to go. And I always put a chunk of heat shrink over top of it when I do that. And you want it to fit just up to the bottom of the fuse itself. And you can do this when it's off or when it's on. I mean, you do run the risk of heating the coil or the filament in the fuse if you do it while it's on. but. It's been my experience that it's never, almost never happened, so the danger is there, but it's minuscule. So if you're putting it on before, you raise it up just a little bit above the connection itself. And that's because when you shrink it, it shrinks down, obviously, just like the name implies. But if it's not over the end, you end up with a problem because it'll be exposed at the bottom. This way, as you can see, it is kind of melted over the end a little bit. So when you put it onto the fuse itself, it seals around it a lot better. So that is the basic setup. Now, the last thing I do that a lot of other people don't really do is I cut off a sizable chunk of the uh, larger size heat shrink. I believe this is an inch size and you slide it over top of the fuse you can leave it so you can just see the top of the fuse the filament to be if it's blown but I mean if it's blown you're gonna know it right pretty much <laughs> but um, this way it pretty much ensures that that fuse 
is not going to wiggle off or come off and whatnot. It also adds another degree of strain relief and uh, some sort of a moisture barrier if you're using it outside. And that is it in a nutshell. That is your basic inline do-it-yourself quick job piece. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, hit that like and subscribe. And until next time, take it easy.